Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm guessing if you clicked on this video, then you might have some questions about sobriety and you're most likely suffering from addiction or substance abuse or something that is keeping you feeling trapped. That's what it does. And you may be looking for a little freedom. So if you're looking to move into sobriety, there's lots of challenges. It is not easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say, just don't drink. But whenever I was trying to get sober, that's, that's what I would hear a lot. That's what the society, that's what the cultural message was, like dare, just say no. Just don't do it. And for some of us, it's not really, not really an option. It's not that cut and dry. When we get physically addicted, we get mentally, emotionally dependent. And the habits that we form and the grooves that we form, samskaras is a word for it in yoga, are so deep that it's really hard to break out of the cycle. So first, just give yourself a little love for beginning on this path, clicking on this video, seeking help. Um, I I'd kind of dabbled in looking around for help way before I actually got sober. And you don't have to wait that long, but um, anyway, I just wanted to show you some appreciation for that. So I just wanted to talk about a few things that would be beneficial when you're looking for something new, looking to do something new. One thing that I think is really beneficial, it was in my world. First, let me say that everybody's journey is going to be different. My experience isn't going to look like yours, isn't going to look like somebody else's, isn't going to look like somebody else's. So while they're all different, they're all threaded through with the same things. Um, Self-loathing, not feeling enough, not feeling part of, grief, really often trauma. So while it looks different on the inside, on the outside often it looks similar on the inside. So just keep that in mind, that there's similarities and there's differences. And the journeys in addiction and in recovery will have both of those variations. But something that was really important in my recovery was telling people, and this is something that shifted for me. So I was trying to get sober for a long time, and I, for various reasons, but one thing is I wouldn't tell anybody. I didn't want anyone to know. I didn't, um, I didn't want to share that I was struggling. I was always somebody that put my shoulders back and was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And that kept me in a place of denial that kept me shrouded in secrecy. So for me to be able to come forth and say that I had a problem was almost like, I remember the first time that I said it, like, it's like, I couldn't speak it. It's like the words couldn't even come out of my mouth. It was like, I'm in, I have a problem. Like, you know, it just didn't work. But then it gets easier as it goes. And that was a big turning point for me whenever I decided, like, I have to tell people that I need help. And that was huge. Not only does it give some accountability, but it helps the people around you know. And the people who care about you and love you are going to support you in this decision. And you want to create a container as much as you can in this chaotic world. You know, there's so many things that we can't control, but this is something that you have a little bit of control over that you can tell the people that you love and hopefully they're receptive and can listen and support you in this. It's a whole nother talk about how to deal, how to deal with, how to deal with, um, the family and the, and the friends, because often, yeah, there's challenges there, but telling people someone in safety. So maybe it's not, maybe it's not family, but someone in safety and someone in confidence, uh, being able to, being able to share that. So we're a species that needs co-regulation. So auto-regulation, doing everything ourselves is part of what's gotten us in this trouble. So co-regulation is this dual processing of being able to see and be seen, be able to voice pain and suffering and have it mirrored back to you and have people empathize, have you know people to be like, I see you, I see that. So it's really important to be able to find that. 
And there's many opportunities to do it. You can go to meetings, you can go to um, therapy, friends, family, but it's really important to be able to show your vulnerability, have it seen and held. So really find somewhere where you can feel safe to do that. Very important. Another thing is that it's very important that we have some toolboxes for shifting when things get uncomfortable. So a samskara is a groove that has happened so many times. It's like a well-worn path and water flows in the path of least resistance. So it's these things that we do so often that we don't even think about doing them and we do them. So it's like um, looking both ways before you cross the street or somebody puts their hand out and you put your hand out and shake it. You don't even think about doing it. It's like a knee jerk reflex. That's kind of what happens in addiction. I get off work, I drink. I wake up, I drink. You make me mad, I drink. Like, you know, it just all of a sudden the bottle's in my hand. I'm sure that you've had that situation where you're like, how did I get here again? It's a samskara. It's a groove that continues to happen. So you can also think about it like, like you're sledding, like you, or you're skiing or something. If you've been skiing, there's certain places where there's grooves that have already happened or you're sledding and there's already a path. You can't really sled in the path next to the sled path, if that makes sense. Um, it's easier to go down the other path. You have, to you have to make a groove on the other side. So that's what we're doing. It's not easy. Like bushwhacking in a jungle, actually, with blindfolded, feels like sometimes. But coming back to that, so there's all of these triggers. So we identify the triggers, the, the, the times that you use. So the times that you use whatever it is, food or sex or substance. What happens right before that? What happens to make you need to do that? So you can even write it out, chart it out of these are all the things that I do before I drink. Like these are the, the lead up. So something normally happens that makes us uncomfortable in the present moment. And then we reach for a substance or whatever it is to satisfy that discomfort, to change that discomfort. So whenever we take the substance away, that discomfort is still there. So we need to have another toolbox of things to reach to. So maybe it's anxiety that's happening. Maybe it's um, not feeling good enough. Maybe it's needing excitement. Maybe it's being bored. Lots of different things. But identifying what these things are and then finding other ways to handle them. So turning on a yoga class. Um, setting your phone for five minutes of a meditation. Journaling. Calling somebody. Taking a bath. Going for a run. Um, so many different things and it will be unique to you. So maybe leave some in the comments if you have some ideas of things that work for you. Um, whenever I was in anxiety, what I would find that really helped is I would put on actually a Tara Brock podcast. Something about her voice was incredibly soothing to me. Um, also Sarah Blondin. These are two people. These are just a couple ideas. I would put on their podcast. And it would really reduce my anxiety. And also for me, for whatever reason, piano music really worked. I found that piano music really worked. So I had a playlist of that, that I would put on whenever I was feeling anxious. So explore things that'll help. And it's so good just to have toolbox, essential oils, really good. I know that some of these things sound a little like, you know, oh, I want to do heroin and said, I'm going to grab lavender oil. You know, that seems like a different, quite a different substance, but we begin to make a new groove and we begin to associate safety with these things where we used to associate, you know, safety and comfort with these other things. But it's very obvious that that's not true. Yeah. So I think that, I think I'm going to stop there with this video and I'm going to, I'm going to continue to make these videos, but th these are two, I think, important things right here. Um, to begin to change the habits, to begin to see imagining those grooves. What are your grooves? Laying out the grooves and then seeing what other ways you can begin to make new grooves and then reaching out to people. I think we're just going to start, start small here and um, reaching out, finding some safe space to co-regulate with other people and then some other ways to auto-regulate. We used to auto-regulate with drugs and alcohol. Now we're going to auto-regulate 
with some other things, with some yoga, with some oils, with some journaling, with some gardening, whatever it is for you. Yeah. So co-regulation, auto-regulation in safe and healthy ways is what we're looking for. So let me know your feedback and your comments about that. Please ask me any questions about getting sober, about addiction, about recovery, because I want to start doing more of these videos. And I would love to be able to speak to what it is that you have questions about. And remember, this is not easy, but it's incredibly worth it. And you're absolutely worth it. So keep going. Peace.